Hello everybody, this is Yoshi with another Wake and Bake. I'm sorry for the slightly, um, uh, what, uh, dim lighting. It's, uh, cloudy outside and our overhead light isn't working at the moment. Um, I want to talk about the use of religion as a tool of oppression in the United States. Let me get this uh, bad boy fired up. I think I kind of messed up on it actually. That's what you get sometimes for rolling straight out of sleep. There we go. Okay. Christianity in America is a giant tool uh, used for oppression. Now, there's a lot of people uh, that like to claim that it's not, that it's uh, about love and whatever. It's not. Look at, uh, in the very beginning of the, uh, United States. Religion, uh, was used to justify slavery, uh, preventing, uh, women from voting, owning land, um, having authority over a woman. Uh, it was used to justify the killings of homosexual people or well, anybody on the LGBC, uh, LGBTQ community. It's used to uh, justify bigotry towards a lot of groups of people. And even nowadays, it's still used as a tool of oppression against people. <coughs> Look at everybody on the right. How they want to <coughs> use Christianity and their quote-unquote freedom of religion to force everybody to abide by uh, Christian laws. There's a lot of people on the right that seek to uh, create a Christian theocracy and make it so that only uh, white Christian males, even though that's still pretty much the way it is now, have power. They want it to where it's only them and there is no secular secularism whatsoever. No actual freedom of religion or anything. It's either you do what the Bible says or you die because Christianity especially when you get really extreme about it is not favorable um, to the life of everybody else the Bible is really big on genocide slavery rape the denial of various rights, torture, um, Christianity is pretty much a major, uh, a major death cult, uh, focusing on, uh, blood. <coughs> uh, for a long time I've been non-religious. Uh, so far, there's no arguments that can be put forth that would uh, cause me to believe in anything like Christianity. Now, if there was evidence to prove that said God of the Christian Bible or any God of any religion was correct, I would be like, okay, yeah, 
this being is correct, but would I worship said being? No, I do not worship evil. <coughs> As if you look at pretty much all religions, their divinities and their rule books and stuff is pretty much evil. Um, we can look at the Abrahamic religions again. Um, uh, the Great Flood, God kills everybody. Um, you got the uh, Curse of Ham, which is uh, a story of one of Noah's sons being cursed to be black and become a slave to his uh, white family. That's uh, that's their story of how uh, black people became slaves. Uh, but that was also used to justify uh, slavery. Uh, in the Mormon Bible, uh, if you're uh, black or have dark skin, you're, you're considered uh, a sinner because only uh, white people who... Because uh, if you believe in Jesus, you are turned white. It's why the, uh, the uh, indigenous Native Americans of the United States had darker skin because they did not believe in Jesus. That kind of uh, behavior and thinking was used to justify the oppression of black people in America for a long time. Not just, well, it wasn't the Mormon belief, but it was <coughs> the racial beliefs of the, uh, of the Bible. Because the Bible is pretty, uh, <coughs> pretty big on race, actually. Um. You had Manifest Destiny, which was uh, used to justify the genocide of the Native Americans in the United States. White men thought God gave them this land, and that it was their destiny to spread the United States from uh, sea to sea. And in order to do that, they had to murder millions upon millions of people, in which they did. <coughs> it's why the uh, native population in the United States, uh, Mexico, and Canada, it is what it, it is what it is, though Mexico's by the Spaniards, though they're still considered Europeans. In the United States, it was by ex-British uh, colonists turned <coughs> Americans. <coughs> uh, black Christians in America, for the most part, pretty much all of them, believe in Christianity because their ancestors were forced to be Christians. It, uh, as, uh, they used Christianity to help make more, uh, subservient slaves. As they knew that black people were not naturally subservient, as there were tons of revolts going on during the slave days of the United States. Um, so, they used various passages, like the one that said, uh, slaves, obey your masters. Uh, <coughs> that's not the whole verse. I'll, uh, let me get it, actually. Uh, they, they used this, uh, this, this verse in order to convince slaves that if they were good, good, obedient slaves, they would get uh, freedom in heaven. Give me one second. 
It is Ephesians 6, 5. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. And so, obey your masters on earth as you would obey Christ. Uh, that is why the Founding Fathers wanted Christians. And that is why it is a tool of oppression. You got with women, um, women are not allowed to uh, have authority over men. Um, women, if they uh, give birth to a girl, are uh, like two to three times uh, uh, they're considered unclean two to three times longer than if they give birth to a boy which is only seven days um, what women are supposed to keep their hair long and be modest uh, women are considered the uh, blame for all of the world's problems according to the Abrahamic religions especially Christianity in America you know uh, Eve ate the apple not Adam Eve was the, uh, the fall of man not Adam even though Eve did not know about the rule against uh, eating the uh, fruit uh, from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it was only Adam, and since Adam did not tell Eve, technically, it is Adam's fault. But we can look at this a little bit deeper. Um, God created the garden, created Adam uh, and Eve. Some texts you can talk about Lilith, which we will. Um, here's my little kitty cat, Stalina. She's a little love bug. She came in from the rain and she wants me to dry her off, basically. Okay, God created uh, Adam and Eve, the garden. He is all-knowing, all-powerful. Um, and he created the tree. Um, and told them not to eat of it of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, the fact that these two beings had no knowledge of good and evil in the first place, they could not comprehend uh, what uh, what it meant to actually disobey any kind of order or statement or whatever because to them disobeying and obeying meant nothing. It's like a, uh, it's like when a, uh, three-year-old or, so, or, uh, someone younger, you know, you, you tell them, don't do this, and then they do it. They're not doing it because they're malicious, they're bad, or whatever. They just don't understand why you're telling them not to. And, from the very get-go, we could have had, uh, God could have created the garden without the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He knew from the get-go that if he put that there, and if he told Adam not to eat of the fruit, and not to tell Eve, and then also create the serpent, which in the Bible, uh, if you look at what, Genesis 1-5? Genesis creation of serpents because uh, in the Bible uh, God says it well it, it says that God uh, Okay, no, Genesis 3, 1.
in Genesis 3 1 It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, uh, well, that doesn't really matter. Did, did God really say, you must not eat from the tree? Um, but Genesis 3.1 um, tells us that God created the serpent. And he created this serpent to be more crafty than any other animal he created. And why would he do that? knowing that this serpent would then tempt Eve into doubting God and eating the fruit. Um, I mean, God wouldn't need his plan of creating uh, Jesus, or himself as a human, and killing himself to forgive uh, humans for his own mistake of creating the serpent and doing what he did, which is technically not considered a mistake, being that he's all-knowing, and he did it uh, with intent, according to the Bible. Uh, so it shows us that the Christian God um, is basically trash. And the people that tend to kind of kind of going off here. The people that tend to follow, they just cherry pick uh, whatever they want uh, in order to, as some people call it, um, they're cafeteria Christians, cherry pickers. They they go and choose what they want, uh, reject what they don't want. That's why you got so many different um, interpretations of the Bible. So many different views. Um, uh, like with the story of Lilith, if you have not heard of the story of Lilith, uh, this shows uh, uh, oppression of women. The story of Lilith is uh, a way of um, explaining why there are two different creation stories of men and women in the Bible. The first creation story, man and woman is created at the same time. Um, that is uh, claimed to be uh, Adam and Lilith. Now, Adam wanted to uh, rule Lilith in every single aspect, and she did not like that. Um, putting forth the point that God created both uh, her, she, uh, Lilith and Adam at the same time from the same dust, so they should be equal. And because Adam did not want that, she called forth God's real name and gained various abilities and left the Garden of, e the Garden of Eden. Um, uh, God sent a messenger to Lilith, um, saying, uh, well, telling her to return, and due to her um, uh, uh, denial of said request um, in putting forth the point that um, why should she go back to being controlled by a man when she has found freedom um, elsewhere. And for that, she was cursed to have a thousand of her children die every day. Uh, her, she is considered to be the mother of demons as well as a succubus. The Lilith character um, and its and her images afterwards are taken from uh, Canaanite mythology, which um, some of the uh, Judaic and a Abrahamic uh, uh, mythologies can take a lot of its root back to the Canaanite mythologies. Uh, this type of uh, story is used to, um, in a way, oppress women, um, saying that uh, unruly women that don't obey women are uh, 
you know, evil, demonic, uh, they're succubus and, and the such. And that, uh, which is why there is the story of Eve, which, uh, where they claim that woman was created from man, and then they can use that to justify that um, man was created first, so he's important. Women were created out of man to be, you know, quote unquote, help meet for man. So the woman is basically the afterthought, and just use their just uh, is just there to keep um, keep m uh, men company. Oh, fun fact, um, Adam tried mating with all the other animals in the Garden of Eden, um, realizing that he was not compatible compatible with them, is when he asked God to create uh, Eve. Uh, it's, it's somewhere in Genesis, I can't remember exactly where, but it's there. <coughs> um, then you do got the... Um, oppression of uh, LGBTQ people uh, with the Bible. You got various verses in the Old Testament and the New Testament, like Leviticus, which uh, is used heavily by a lot of people on the right. Um, though they do uh, enjoy failing to mention uh, other Levitical laws, like you're not allowed to round the corners of your beard. Uh, you're not allowed to uh, grow two crops, two different crops in the same field. You can't wear uh, two different uh, types of fiber, so like polyester and cotton is considered a sin. Uh, eating pork, eating shellfish, um, working on the Sabbath. Um, like uh, in the Bible, uh, somebody uh, worked on the Sabbath, was killed. Uh, you're supposed to kill people working on the Sabbath. Uh, he was collecting sticks. Uh, people saw that he was collecting sticks, took him in front of Moses, Moses asked God what to do, God said kill him. So, you can't work on the Sabbath. Uh, people of other faiths, uh, you're not allowed to be of other faiths, as that is considered a sin. And, it even goes to the point of, if you hear about people in other cities, uh, uh, worshipping other religions, you're supposed to kill them. Mm. What else? Uh, more modern day stuff. It's it's still basically that they use the uh, same verses and stuff to uh, justify all the um, oppression of LGBTQ black people. Um, Poor people pretty much as well. Pre pretty much anybody that they don't like. People on the right. Um, and it's, it's mainly because the Bible is in its entirety a tool of oppression. Um, I'll just... Gotta talk more about this later, I guess. I'm gonna end this here. Peace.